Welcome to Over It and On With It. I'm your host, Christine Hassler, and for over a decade, I've been a life coach, speaker, and author. Each week, you'll hear me work directly with a caller as I coach them through a goal they want to accomplish or an obstacle they may be facing. I'll provide a blend of practical and spiritual advice as well as tangible actions you can apply to your own life. Now, let's get on with the episode. Well, welcome everyone to the first official episode of Over It and On With It. If you missed my introductory episode where I share my Over It and On With It story and a little bit of my philosophy and what this show is about, then I encourage you to go back and check that out first. And in this episode, we debut the first live coaching call. And in preparing for the launch of the show, I did about 25 coaching sessions with people and choosing which one to make episode one was tough because they're all just so amazing. So I ended up choosing this session with Annika for a few reasons. First, we get into the question, who am I? And that was a question I asked you in the introductory episode and you did an exercise around that. So this session will give you even more insight. And second, there is so much vulnerability in this call, and I always find vulnerability not only touching, but really inspiring. You know, when we're vulnerable, when we really show up, oftentimes emotion can come up, and there's self-consciousness around emotion in our culture, especially sadness and anger, and we often suppress those feelings, we apologize for crying, we don't want to show our quote-unquote weakness, but to me, vulnerability is strength. So I love that Annika allows emotion to come up in this episode and allows herself to be vulnerable because that really did set the stage for her to have big shifts in the call. And we cover a lot of ground in this session, everything from the fear that comes up from being who we are, to comparison, to loneliness, to making transitions, to full authentic self-expression. So as you listen to this session, I encourage you to consider, do you feel like you're really living authentically? Do you feel like you're fully expressing who you are, or do you feel like you're being a version of yourself? Do you struggle with loneliness sometimes and think that everyone else is at some party you're not invited to? Do you sit and torture yourself looking at your Facebook feed and believing that everyone else has such a better life and is so much farther ahead than you are? Are you in touch with your emotions? Do you really know what you're feeling? And do you know what to do with your feelings when you feel them? Are you concerned, perhaps even obsessed, about what other people think of you? So much so that it may be stopping you from fully expressing yourself or making a choice in life. Are you a people pleaser? So keep these questions in mind. Listen with an open heart for yourself and anyone else you want to share this episode with. And let's get in to support Annika on getting over it and on with it. Hello, Annika. Welcome to the show. What is your question? Hi, Christine. I'm so happy to be here. Um, (laughs) So my question is, um, I'm at a point where I really, really, really want to shift from um, a pattern that I've basically had, I would say, most of my life, which is to always keep myself small and not seen. And it has gotten to the point where it feels so restricted and stifling and um, I don't really know where to begin to shift into being more open and vulnerable and just honest about who I am. Um, I'm 37 years old and I feel like I should have become more clear about this at this point in my life, but I'm really not. And um, the reason it's come up for me right now is because I'm ready to make a big career change. And my background has been more in teaching and counseling, but um, there's, I think, a very big part of me that's more of an artist and I have not, I've kind of neglected that part of myself and I am wanting to put that out into the world, but I know I have these internal blocks and fears about being vulnerable and sharing that, that stuff with people. Um, so I just felt like it'd be a good time to talk to you. Mm, mm. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you called. Oh. And I also just hear the emotion underneath everything you just <laughs> shared. So, um, which is really sweet. And, and part of being more artistic, more creative is also just being in touch with that emotional center. And a lot of times 
those of us who haven't shone brightly and uh, have been stifling ourselves kind of put on a happy face and expend a lot of energy and looking happy and pleasing others um, and not being authentic with our emotions. So um, this isn't about having to play big or make some big bold statement. This is just about you being authentic. And the only person that can give you permission to do that is you. You know, so let me ask you this. What what scares you about being you? Uh, what scares me the most is um, feeling like it just won't be well received. <laughs> Sorry, there's a lot of emotion there. Yeah, so um, just, just let that come up. Don't rush yeah, it. But, don't don't rush but, it. Because well, hold on, hold on. A lot of times what happens is we want to keep talking to suppress the emotion. <laughs> So just let yourself, yeah. So just let yourself feel that. So true. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, um, I think it's so ingrained in me to just feel, um, in so many ways that I just never really quite fit in. Um, and so to be truly honest about who I am, it's like, just that fear of like, if I didn't think I was, if I didn't think I fit in before, when I try to be what I thought everybody wanted me to be, how the hell am I going to fit in by being truly genuinely who I am? And it's so hard to like know intellectually and to really believe that, you know, I mean, I just, I know I'm okay who I am, but I just don't feel that yet. It's like, I, I think it in my head and I get the worry. Yeah. That, you know, yeah, um, I have do have things to offer and I'm okay as I am, but I just haven't made that connection to my heart yet. I hear you. And you're more than okay as who you are. You're whole and complete and lovable and we all are. So a couple things. One, just want to acknowledge your courage and your vulnerability because right now you're being authentic. So I just want to presence that you like, we're, we're having the experience right now of you being authentic and you're serving so many people who are going to listen to this call. So I just want you to feel that. I want you to feel your courage and I want you to feel the power of your vulnerability and just, just check in. It, it, it feels okay. Doesn't it? Like, are you, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like you're going to die? Like, is anything terrible going to happen? <laughs> No, it feels, no, it feels okay. Scary, but, um, but yeah, the world's not going to fall apart. <laughs> well, and you know, is it really scary or is it just unfamiliar? It totally, that is so, that is so spot on because, um, God, that is funny. It is just so unfamiliar. Right. And when I look at the patterns that I just continue to repeat in my life, it's just keeping myself in the position of familiarity, mm-hmm. which is your comfort Familiar- zone. Mm-hmm. Completely, completely. But you're not thriving in your comfort not zone. At all. You're just surviving. And 100%. what you said earlier, you said, you know, so much of this has been ingrained. It's, it's actually mm-hmm. been programmed. What's, what's ingrained and what's innate is the truth of who you are, which is love and wholeness and completeness. So this is just a matter of unprogramming some things and remembering the truth of who you are and being willing to allow other people not to like it. You know, you've expanded so much energy, so much of your precious energy on putting other people's thoughts of you, relationship with you above your relationship with yourself and self-love, a self-acceptance, you know, this isn't, this isn't something we can get in our head. And it sounds like you've, you've done a lot of the reading, a lot of the work to know that self-love and self-acceptance and authenticity is the way you want to go, but it doesn't integrate until behavior shifts. And the only way that we start to believe that we, we love ourselves is if we start treating ourselves with love and start trusting ourselves. So it's, it's just like a child would never trust an adult who sometimes picks them up from school and sometimes doesn't, you know, it's Absolutely. that, it's that consistency of behavior. So right now there's a part of you that doesn't trust yourself because you're not delivering on really being authentic. So the more actions you take that will, 
you know, support that authenticity, the more you are saying, I'm willing, I'm willing to be judged. You know, that was one of the things that uh, a promise I made to myself when I started this career and I was going to start putting my life out there and (laughs) my thoughts out there. I was like, some people aren't going to like it. Some people aren't going to like me. I'm willing to be judged. However, that to me is such a small cost when I look at the payoff of being true to my soul. Oh, I love it. That's so, so, so key to hear. Yeah. So little steps here, because we want, we want to shift. You have a lot of awareness. So we want to look at some behavioral stuff. What are some things you said you're going to make a career change, but what are some some ways in your life where you really see yourself being inauthentic? Oh, that's a great question. Um, sugar coating difficult feelings, um, mm. both to myself and to others, mm-hmm. not letting people see how I'm genuinely feeling because I don't want it to be a burden on others. And I don't want to be honest enough with myself to be truly present with difficult emotions. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's pause for a second. So yeah. what would a difficult emotion be? Loneliness. Okay. And what's, yeah. dif- what's difficult about that for you? Um, feeling like I'm not connected with people mm-hmm. that, um, it's a feeling of being very isolated and, um, it's almost like the small child inside of me that feels like everyone else on the outside world is connected and at a big fun barbecue and I'm at home alone and no one even really is aware of it. So you don't like loneliness. Loneliness is loneliness is a hard one. Let's look at this because this, I'm getting goosebumps. This you can shift right away because I want to point something out to you. Loneliness has totally been your best friend and your protector. You know why? Because it's the only time you give yourself a break from people pleasing. Oh my God, that is so true. It's the only wow. time you rest. <sighs> wow. And as much as you want to be out there with all the people, that part of you that's like, oh God, when I'm with other people, I have to do this song and dance and people please and I'm not me. So I just would rather be alone. <laughs> so true. So it's actually been your happy place in a lot of ways, but because you have judgment on it, you haven't seen that. Yes. Oh my God. That's so true. And it's, I never really thought of it that way either, but it is like, it goes hand in hand with being an introvert. Like I'm, I'm pretty introverted Mm -hmm. and it's just always been that feeling of, you know, why can't you just kind of suck it up and be an extrovert? Like, why can't you just be more, um, I guess, engaging or, you know, less of an observer and more of an initiator and more of a, you know, action oriented. And, and, um, I, I don't know, I guess, I don't know. I think part of it's culturally, but part of it's just also just feeling like as a child, you know, when you have friends who want to be out and about and social all the time. And yeah, like you said, like, I need my time to myself. Mm-hmm. I need my time with my books and the quiet time um, that it just never really felt. I never let myself accept that part of me right. because it just felt so not what was the ideal. Right. Yeah. You've been trying to fit yourself into like a size six shoe when you wear a nine, you <sighs> totally. know, and it's like part of being, you know, totally authentic is being not, not trying to be somebody else, not trying to be somebody you're not, you know, and this is a big thing for all of us is to really embrace our own essence. There's a lot of people and Facebook makes this even easier to compare ourselves to. And we look at things and we're like, Oh, I should be more like that person or that person, but we're all a unique expression of God, a unique expression of spirit. We all are. And so well, I have a couple homework assignments for you. The first one is, Love it. I really want you to write out who you are, your unique essence of who you are, not, not who you've pretended to be, not who other people have told you you are. Cause you know, you might've been told, Oh, Annika, you're so happy all the time, but you know what? Oh, that yeah. may not be true. Yep. 
<laughs> you know, and pretty he, much. <laughs> and here's the thing with you know being feeling this draw draw to artists. You know, the artist archetype is is messy and fiery, and and it's not being emotionally reactive, but it's about the ups and downs. You know, yep. and and part of the reason that we feel alone and separated and restrictive and why we hold weight on our body and all these things is because we're suppressing who we truly are. Ah, so true. So I want you to write out like who you are. And every day in the, when you start the day, I want you to do a a 30 day mirror process where you look in the mirror and connect your own eyes. And with what you wrote out, you make them, I am statements. Love that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, Christine. Oh yeah. Well, there's more. So, (laughs) (laughs) so the other thing I'd love you to do is to pick at least two people, but two to three people that you can start practicing intimacy and authenticity with. Love that. And you can, you know, really share, you know, I I have a confession I'm going to make and I've been pretending and this is what's really true for me. And this is what I've really been struggling with. And the thing about vulnerability and authenticity is it's not about airing our dirty laundry or bringing all the things we're ashamed of to someone. It's just about being real and it's about dropping the mask and, and a great, a great sentence. Uh, this is actually another writing assignment I'd like you to do yeah. is, um, um, and I teach this in my light worker workshop, um, that you can also live stream. Um, and I'll tell you more about that off, off the air, but, um, right. Sometimes I pretend I'm blank when I'm not. And I want you to really start identifying all the places that you pretend. Oh, there are many. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then that just that word pretend. Yeah. Definitely feel that. Yeah. And it's exhausting. It's It's exhausting. exhausting. And it just feels like so much wasted time. It's, it's wasted time, it's wasted energy, and it's wasted life yep. force, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. Um, and then the final thing, because I don't want to overwhelm you with, with assignments, uh, but the oh, last thing. <laughs> <laughs> All about learning at school. Yeah. It, it, well, you know, it's about learning, and it's also just about remembering. You know, yeah. there's not much you have to learn here. There's there's really two parts to this. There's the the willingness to not give a damn what other people think of you yep. um, and really drop the people pleasing thing. And, and then there's the, the self acceptance and the remembering your essence of who you truly are. Um, so the other thing that I would uh, do is write a thank you letter to loneliness and really see Love how that. it's served you and that time alone. And then set up a sacred space in your house an altar or a special chair mm-hmm. or something Grab your journal and maybe a picture of you when you were a little girl. And part of how we uh, get out of the feeling of loneliness is through our spiritual practice. Because when we're connected to the divine, we realize we're never, ever, ever alone. And it's in those times when we're alone where we actually can feel the most connected to spirit, whether we're alone in our home or whether we're alone on a hike. So invite spirit, invite your guides, invite your angels into the space where you feel alone and start to feel the company of the unseen because it's all around you. I love that. Love, love, love that. These are, this is amazing. Oh, good. Well, you are amazing. Oh, <laughs> <That's> very sweet. <laughs> so the, a, a question for you. Um, yeah. What are you most afraid of people thinking about you? Um, that's a really, that's a big one. Um, what am I most afraid? That that they're going to be polite to my face, but behind my back or, you know, even internally thinking to themselves, like, who does she think she is? 
regardless of what the subject is. Like, who does she think she is to think she's capable of doing that? Who does she think she is to, you know, offer such and such to the world? And just feeling like, um, yeah, that I have to prove myself. That first, that I just, in order to earn um, respect or to earn um, acceptance from other people that I have to, that there's something I have to prove. Mm -hmm. So you know whose voice that really is, right? Who? Yours. (laughs) Yeah, totally. That's just your self-doubt and inner criticism that you're projecting on other people. Okay. And we teach people how to respond. So there's, there's, there's two things that happen. Mm -hmm. Either we, we come in and we're so congruent with what we're sharing Um, and people are like, awesome. You know, when I tell people I, I'm a coach, they get it. They're like, awesome. Because I'm so congruent in it. Um, if they don't, that means it's just triggering something in them and it's their own judgment and it's not my responsibility. Absolutely. So it's, it's always, it's always projection. (laughs) Well, I won't say always, most of the time it's projection. So your fear of what other people think of you is just your own internal fear voice projected outward. And if you don't want people to think that (laughs) PS, who cares what people think, but if you don't want people to think that you've got to stop thinking that about yourself. Okay. And every person has the, who am I to story? And to Mm -hmm. me, that's really a disgrace to God because we are all born with these gifts and we feel them. We feel them. And if we deny them or we doubt them, it's, it's like taking a gift that's been given to us by the divine and saying, oh no, this isn't real. No, thank you. So true. So so do you want to use the gifts that God's given you or do you want to be obsessed with what other people (laughs) think? (laughs) Oh my God. I so just want to use it and own it and be it and everything. Good. And are you okay if some people along the way don't like it? Yes. Yes. Like you said, screw it. Yeah. (laughs) It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It's just letting myself feel the discomfort of and getting to the point where it truly feels genuinely comfortable. And that's an inside job. To be okay with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's totally an inside job. And the more you see and embrace who you truly are, the more you'll feel that and do a lot of self-forgiveness around this whole self-doubt thing and who am I to and and all of these. Because basically, you know, forgiveness is just about releasing judgments. Things get locked in place because we judge them. So do you have um, you have a copy of Expectation Hangover? Yes. Um, I need to get one. I borrowed it from the library, but I want to own it. Okay. <laughs> there are many things I want to highlight and underline. So okay. um, I will I will definitely get one of my own. Yes. The forgiveness section would be very yeah. good for you. And also yep. the, the guided visualization on surrender would be very good for you as yes. well. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Awesome. Thank you so much, Christine. This is, I already just feel lighter. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Yeah. And, and, and notice, I just want to point out one more thing. So you said you yeah. feel lighter right now, right? Mm-hmm. You feel better than you did at the beginning of the call, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you did that by being authentic. Aww. You created the shift by being who you are. So really anchor this and see the power Mm-hmm. of who you are and I assure you the people listening feel so much closer to you and so much more connected to you because of that you've already served people thank you so much my pleasure many blessings wasn't that a beautiful expression of the power of vulnerability and never ceases to amaze me how just being honest and real with our true feeling creates shifts And I wanted to share that since my session with Annika, she actually started a blog and started to share authentically and vulnerably and put her voice out in the world. And even though she was scared to do it, she's committed and she's been writing and sharing on a regular basis, which has been such a creative outlet for her in a way that she's starting to feel more authentically expressed and dropping the mask. So awesome work, Annika. 
So some takeaways for you. First of all, if you didn't notice, and if you don't feel it, not being who you are is totally suffocating. It's totally suffocating. And it causes us to do things that really don't create any kind of joy or fulfillment in our life. So you saw how by not being who she is, Annika's only source of relief was loneliness. You know, she would create conditions in which she didn't have to show up and she didn't have to people please. But what you think is protecting you often isn't. So on some level, her her ego thought the loneliness was protecting her, but it really wasn't because she really does desire connection. Now that said, those parts that have protected you, like maybe loneliness, are not wrong. They've served you. So as you break patterns and move more into the expression of who you are, thank them. Don't make them wrong. You know, that was one of the tips that I gave her is, is to really come to peace with loneliness, thank it, and find a place for it because sometimes we're supposed to be alone. That's when we truly nurture our relationship with ourselves. That's when we nurture our relationship with spirit. I remember after my divorce, when I was living on my own, and after living with someone for a number of years and then living on your own, it's normal to get quite lonely. And it was a beautiful time for me to really connect more deeply to my spiritual practice and to know that even though like physically I may be alone, I have my relationship with myself and I have my relationship with the spirit and my guides. And in that stillness, in that quietness, I could find that connection. Now, the trick is, or not necessarily a trick, but more of a secret, is the thing that will get in your way to truly feeling connected when you're alone and truly hearing your intuition is judging being alone. Now, if you are thinking everyone else is at some party you're not invited to and everyone else is having more fun and, oh my gosh, it's a Friday night, you shouldn't be alone and there's shame on that. If there's judgment or commentary running, then you won't find that peace and that stillness in loneliness, which will help you with a deeper connection. So you've got to let go of the judgment about loneliness. It's not being alone that makes you lonely. It's what you tell yourself about being alone that makes you lonely. And really ask, you know, can you relate to being a people pleaser and and having to expend so much energy when you're around other people? You may not be a people pleaser, but you may be super self-conscious. So your alone time is the only time you give yourself a break. So how can you stop being such a people pleaser? How can you really move into self-acceptance and not be so self-conscious so that you don't have to retreat into alone time as, as a break? And rather than it being a retreat or a break from pretending, it can again be that time of solitude and connection to your higher self and your higher power. So another takeaway from this session is please don't let yourself be defined by what other people have told you about you. You Throughout our lives, we get told things like, you're smart, you're the life of the party, you're pretty, you're so well-behaved, you're going to be successful, or the opposite, we hear negative things. You know, you're not smart enough. You're a failure. Your dreams won't come true. You can't do it on your own. And we allow what other people tell us to become our identity. You get to choose who you are. And who you are is is already in there. Now, again, go back and listen to the introductory episode where I take you through an exercise on defining who you are. Who you are are the natural, authentic qualities that just are what you're born with. But because life is life and we, things happen and we form these belief systems and fears and judgments, and we listen more to what other people say than our own internal voice, we allow our identity to be defined by what people tell us about us. But that is not who you are. That's not who you are. Some assignments for you to help you with these takeaways is to do some, who am I essence writing? You know, I encourage Annika to do that, to write out the qualities that really make you who you are, what makes you unique. How do you really want to see yourself? And second, if you're dealing with loneliness and also feel like you're kind of pretending and not fully being yourself with people, pick two to three people that you can start to build intimacy with. Two to three people that you feel safe with, a trusted friend, maybe someone that's in a spiritual community with you, and just be totally honest. Say, hey, I'm working on vulnerability and intimacy. 
I'd love just to have a conversation with you where I just share what I'm dealing with. And my request is that you just listen and hold space for me. I'm not looking for advice. I'm not looking for anybody to fix it for me. I'm not looking to commiserate. I just really want to be seen. And people will show up and do that for you. Sometimes we have to ask, but it's okay to ask. Ask. And then also find the comfort in the unseen. You know, find the comfort in those alone times to your own guides. And finally, write a thank you letter to loneliness or whatever protective behavior you've developed. Don't make the parts that you judge about yourself wrong. See how they've served you. So I want to close with a rather confronting question for you, especially for those of you who are a little too concerned about what other people think. Do you want to use the gifts God has given you, the natural gifts you were born with, or do you want to be obsessed with what other people think? Another way to answer the question is, do you want to live your life for you or for other people? And if and when that internal question comes up of who am I to whatever, who am I to be a writer, who am I to be an artist, who am I to believe in love, whatever it may be, well, I ask you back, who are you not to be? You've been given so many gifts. You're special in your own way. You're qualified to do whatever is truly in your heart's desire to do. And I know that's true because it's in your heart. If you weren't qualified to do it, you wouldn't feel the pull to do it. And at the same time, you are no more special or less special than anyone else. We all have our gifts to share and our work to do here in the world. So my encouragement to you today is to stop pretending to be someone you're not. Stop fearing being who you truly are and start making the impact you're here to make. Thank you for listening to Over It Non With It. I love hearing from you, so please post your comments or questions at christinehasler.com slash podcast. That's also the place you can sign up to receive coaching from me in an upcoming episode. And if you love this show, please share it and subscribe on iTunes. You can find all my social media handles and sign up to be part of my community at christinehasler.com. Until next week, here's to getting over it and on with it. Much love and many blessings. Blessings.